used to telling my own story, so I have to subtract 50 years from my life to think about <laughs> what it must be like to be a high school student these days. I didn't realize until the 10th grade that I was on what they call certificate track. I mean, I, I didn't really even know what that was at the time. Certificate track, as in not on track to get a high school diploma. I found out while I was in class, and everybody was laughing and having a good time, and, and me too. I mean, I was laughing, I was playing music on my phone, I was talking, and the teacher got mad, and we started arguing. I definitely remember what she said. She said, see, this is why you are on certificate track because you don't get your work done. I remember how everybody kept on laughing, and that did not feel good. My boy said, you know what that means? I said, no, and that's when I started asking people, and my friends told me, certificate doesn't even count. I mean, it's like you basically come to school for no reason. I was thinking, well, what's the point? So I started messing around in class even more. One day, I was getting really frustrated with my teacher consultant because I felt like she was treating me like I was a baby. I mean, she wanted to help me a little bit too much. You all know what I mean? Like, too much. And, and I stormed out of class because I was so frustrated I was just yelling. My mentor from the Student Advocacy Center came up, and the two of us had been working together since sixth grade, so, you know, I was used to talking with him. We saw each other several times a week. He had an office at the high school. When I stormed out, my teacher followed me out of the classroom. She told me my mentor, Anil, uh, needed to have a talk with me, that I was being disrespectful and I wouldn't sit down. Anil pulled me into the office down the hall. He said, what's going on? What's wrong? I mean, why are you driven in class? I told him my teacher was doing too much and giving me extra help, all this kind of stuff that I felt like I didn't need because I felt like I could just do this on my own. I didn't need that kind of help. That's when Anel asked me if I knew what, what it meant to be on certificate track. I told him the school never told me. I, I had just had to find out on my own. I still didn't really understand it or, or what to do about it. I, I said, it's like you're going to school for no reason at all because the certificate doesn't count for getting into a real college. I told Anil I wanted to get a diploma. So then Anil and I talked about the diploma track and what it would be like, it'd be twice as hard, especially because people already were counting me out. So I kept struggling in school and I kept getting suspended about five times, between two and five days each. My school had a lot of concerns about me going on diploma track. They didn't think I had the skills. They didn't see it from my side. We had a big meeting in the office. I mean, so many people were there. My, my granny was there, my great granny, my aunt, Anil, the assistant principal, the teacher consultant, the social worker, the room was packed and I was kind of nervous and worried. And, uh, I, I didn't really even know what we were talking about exactly. I just figured it was a regular old meeting. But it wasn't. Anel stood in for me. He said, I think you all need to give this young man a chance, a chance to prove himself and then go from there. I just know it felt good to have somebody believe in me. And then the team made this decision to switch me to diploma track. I knew I didn't want to be on the certificate track, but still, I mean, with that decision, I was a little bit scared because I knew I'd have to work really hard. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> I started trying harder. I started staying after school, and I started catching on. My second semester, I got all Bs. That was definitely an improvement from the C's and D's of the semester before. But it wasn't until 11th grade 
that my behavior really improved. I didn't get even one suspension. And, and none this year either. But I have to tell you, I still did miss a lot of school last year so I could take care of my, my, uh, my nanny. Um, see, I've been living with my nanny. Uh, that's my great grandmother. Been living with my nanny since I was born. Sometimes I would stay with my mom, but she had me when she was really young and she wasn't really ready to be a parent. So she gave custody to my nanny. And last year, um, nanny's health was not so good. See, she has dementia. So I need to stay home sometimes um, so I can make sure that she would eat and that she takes a shower and that uh, she gets some exercise. But at the same time, I kept working hard on my classes and I, and I passed my classes. And, and then in the summer, I had to do summer school you know, to make up for some of the ninth grade classes that I had failed. And luckily we did get some help from my nanny. Other family members stepped in to help take care of her. So now I'm able to go to school even more. And Anil, well, Anil kept pushing me, pushing me toward my goals to graduate and be successful in life. He met with me almost every single day. I don't really know what my life would be like without Anil. I'd probably still be on certificate track. So I'm a senior now, and, and um, I'm excited because I'm going to graduate. Um, I'm hoping to take some trade classes for science, and I want to learn how to drive. And You all know, a lot of people struggle in school and feel like they can't go on, like they can't do it. The Check and Connect program helps to wake you up. A mentor helps to push you toward your goals. It's like you and your best friend are, are racing, you know and you want to give up. But the friend keeps pushing you and pushing you and pushing you until you reach the finish line. 